Little did I realize she was about to produce the mother of all surprises. Right, fish is coming up. Fish is coming up. Okay. Okay, you ready, boys? So we got the fish here in the net. I finally caught one, my first Chow Pryor stingray. I keep well clear, though. Until its sting is strapped up, this fish is still a loaded gun. So this is just binding the, binding the barb, which sits in a bit of a groove, and that is binding the barb to the tail. Once it's disarmed, we head for the bank. Most of the body of the fish is actually in the water. I haven't really properly seen this fish. I'm really looking forward now to getting it in and having a proper look at this animal. This species is said to top 1,300 pounds. Yet, as I now discover, this is only half the story. We've got a male. This one's a male. The entire team is on hand to help measure and weigh the fish. So this one's about four and a half foot across. It's not particularly big as they go, but it is very big for a male. Its sex explains why this one came up so fast. Astonishingly, females can be up to eight times bigger than this full-grown male. We've weighed it accurately, which is quite a hard thing to do. We've done it very quickly. 175 pounds, around 80 kilos. For sheer weight, this is one of the largest fish I've ever caught. And yet, incredible as it sounds, it's a mere minnow. But this isn't how I imagined I'd first see it. The guts have been taken out. No tail. Tail's been hacked off on this. And this is actually a fish that I didn't know existed until I came here. I've known for ages that, that you get stingrays in fresh water, but this particular species, we're talking about you know, a very short time that I've known this existed, and, and here is the evidence in the flesh. I mean, there's no doubt about it, this is a very, very creepy-looking fish. You've got these fine denticles all over the body, like miniature teeth. Some of them are more enlarged. As we get to the tail, look at that. That's starting to get some really serious, sharp, lumpy denticles there. You know, and that's quite apart from the, the spine you've got on the back, which is just like this sort of dirty, serrated blade. So, I mean, this animal, it's not just the tail. This is just like a, a very lethally armed animal. I want to get it to the beach where I can handle it safely, but that means coaxing it 200 yards further downstream. We've got it literally just 10, 15 feet from the bank. As the creature tires, I have it exactly where I want it. There it is, 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 there it is! Finally, after perhaps the most punishing battle I have ever had, I land one of the biggest, strongest, and most alien freshwater fish I've ever seen. The thing I really want to do with this one, though, is get a close look at the tail. I mean, obviously not too close. And to think this is a fish that until recently I didn't even know existed. The Chucho de Rio is unlike any other ray I've come across. OK, 50... Nearly 53 inches. Which would make it easily 250 pounds. But what really makes this species stand out is that it is a killer, with a weapon as brutal as a medieval mace, like a club fortified with rusty nails, which it drives in with its massive bulk. I might have to just kneel on top of the animal. Uh, OK. <clears throat> That's what I wanted to look at. Uh, the dead animal I saw had its tail chopped off. This one has its sting intact. It's got two stings on there. And also, by the look of it, uh, you know, this can come a long way on either side. It's also very flexible. So I wouldn't want to get anywhere near this. <sighs> Time to put this back in the water. Um, my arms are just aching so much. I've been fishing solid for 11 days. If this feels anything like I do, it's very tired. 
what I'm about to do now is actually very significant because this is a fish, and I always like to return fish alive, but this is a fish where, you know, the locals don't give it any quarter. This stingray has evolved to survive in totally fresh water. In fact, it is now thought to be incapable of living in the sea. It's near the surface. I've just actually seen the lead. It's up in the water. I think we've got it. I think we've got it. Back of the net. And this one looks pretty big, with an impressive 10-inch sting. Head of the science team, Dr Ning, first secures the barb. She's asked me to help her collect some venom before we release the fish. It takes six people to heave this huge animal onto its front, into a position where we can measure it. Okay, 180 centimetres to the base of the tail. Okay. Ooh. Head down, head down for one, head down for one. Okay. Go for the wingspan. One metre 91, nearly two metres across, 191. At around six feet across and roughly 400 pounds, this female stingray is by far the largest river fish I've ever seen. Little did I realise she was about to produce the mother of all surprises. So we've just got the fish into where the, science, the scientific team is. And literally as we sort of pulled it in in the net, it's actually given birth to two live young. Dr Ning uses ultrasound to see if there are any more babies still inside. This is the first time scientists have been able to collect data from the fully formed pups of these stingrays. On the ultrasound there's the dark line which is a cavity and then there is a, a lighter shape inside it so apparently that is the baby stingray still inside. For me this fish is a real first and not just for its size. I thought I had one fish on the end here. It looks like I've got one, two, three, and another one inside. Four fish, one hook. Like many sharks, stingrays give birth to live young. When they emerged, these babies had what looked like a small cap on their stings, presumably to prevent internal injury to the mother. However, these safety catches soon drop off. Within minutes, these twins are armed and ready to defend themselves. 